Itsy Wincy sprung in the glade of the water's bow. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and brightened all the rain. So Itsy Wincy spider came out the spot again. Welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Francis. I'm Stuart. And this is Baby Rio. Oh, say everyone, look at you. Say hello to all your subscribers. Please subscribe, please. I love the subscribers. <laughs> and I love to touch the camera. <laughs> Wanted to say hello first. He's really got his own mind into me. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> We're going to talk all about your first birthday party. So let's talk about his first year birthday party because it was so good. I've actually it taken was... a week to, to recover. I know, I feel like we all were ill. Like, I know, I'm getting run down. It was such a momentous moment in our uh, Yeah, we spent life. like days, weeks planning. So yeah, we really did. And we wanted, we wanted to be a party that was really extra, but with a huge heart. But both of our mums are just unbelievable yeah. at being creative and just, they just threw the best party. And I want to say the biggest thank you, in case my mum is watching this, yeah. my mum really orchestrated the whole thing. And I can't wait to talk you all through it because for me, it was just like every single moment had been mapped out by her. And I think she just did such a great and job. And she stayed like countless late nights. We'd go to bed and she'd still be here at like 1am in the morning, like putting the party together. It was just Incre insane. incredible. And I think we had, it was epic, but with a handmade feel. I think that's what, yeah. what, that's what gave it heart. So we wanted this party to be as extra as possible. And so we, as soon as people arrived, we had this door that people arrived through, like a, a party foliage door <laughs> with all of these different balloons. And people arrived through that door. On the right hand side, they had this massive circle full of balloons, balloons. Uh, that my mum made. On the left hand side, um, they saw this incredible thing from um, my, first years. my first years. They just did the most unbelievable display. Um, it was so nice they teamed up with us for the party because they did this display, display of balloons and then every child went away with the most incredible gift box with like a dressing gown, a David Attenborough book, um, what else was that, teddy bear. It was just all like, I felt like it was such a wow factor when it people came in. It was insane. I was blown away. By and the then to add, to add to it, on the stairs as well, um, Rose had put all of my mum's handmade like animals like tied to a little brown present which had like a book or a puzzle in it. So it was all up the stairs, and to your left, to your right. It was just like overload from the get-go. Overload. <laughs> all the children that had sensory issues <laughs> were like, like oh! in the in the room. Um, and then walk through into the kitchen and then we had you're greeted by 15 high chairs I mean it looked like we were running an orphanage <laughs> just absolutely would fantastic. you consider having 15 kids no no I think two is two is I always think you know I love having the idea of having a big family but the logistics of having a big family yeah. I just I get overwhelmed by very small details well when I was younger because I'm one of four boys we used to go away in mini buses so like, yeah it's that's that's a lot but anyway, thank you to Graco as well, who gifted all these chairs. And we're actually currently looking for a charity to gift these onto now that they've been used once. And I'm so glad they're gonna to go to Amazing Home. So Stuart and I actually love putting on parties and we put on many parties in this house. And I was just laughing so much because our life has changed so much in a year. We've gone from like adults in the garden, like beer cans, Prosecco everywhere. To, I mean, it was Prosecco, but it's like baby, baby music, baby raves. It's just like soft play. It's, I just, yeah. I just love how, how our life has changed, but it was still a really great party. It was today. an amazing party. And then after that section finished, then we literally let everyone mingle in the garden. Everyone was sitting on the um, summer chairs, which <laughs> was so bizarre. But then we also had in this room here, um, which is our gym, gym we had a really gorgeous soft play and that was just beautiful yeah, by baby bees it. it was an, it was like perfect in line with your your color taste as yeah well. you, you know how the kardashians always have like these lovely and neutral new, colors yeah, and neutral colors and, whites and pinks and whites i and was like, like oh all white it was beautiful my mum when, when i first said to my mum she's like what are you gonna do that for are the kids like bright colors i was like oh, but i don't <laughs> it's all about the aesthetic of the party, yeah. but it was a really beautiful aesthetic. So the party began, and oh my gosh, it began with a bang.
We hired this entertainer called... BB's Entertainment Party. That's what her name was, but you put me on the spot. That was really hard. <laughs> Becky from BB Party. She was incredible. Like, she was she so, was so high, high energy. energy. I was like, oh my God, you are our kind of vibe. Yeah, and basically she got all the kids straight away together into the into the office space, which looked epic. We had Rio, we had the backdrop, we had like your mum had like she kept on making more balloons. I was I like, where are these balloons coming from? Our house was one big balloon by the end. Of <laughs> We've it. still got them in our house, by the way. But yeah, she just kicked off the party with such a bang. She was so high energy, and she was blowing bubbles. Then we were doing dances. There was a parachute. The, my favorite part of the whole day, because I think this was like the real kind of thing that kind of solidated everything together. Yeah. It was so fun. My favorite part of the whole day was when she started playing jungle music and all the adults were like there raving with yeah. their little ribbons and stuff. It was it basically was so like a, a, an adult rave, it but with, with babies. But also as a child, I don't know if you remember this, but as a child for me, one of my favorite memories was the parachute. Yeah. I used to love going underneath the parachute. And also one of so my favourite memories is actually seeing my parents let go and dance and things like that. And I think the parents really did well they on that. They did that. My mum was well into it. She was like, as soon as you were pouring that Prosecco, she was straight on it. She was like, they're dancing with their scarves. <laughs> <laughs> I just love watching all the different personalities in the kids. Like, because it was quite loud, you see some kids were like straight in there at the front. And then you see the other kids who were like, for a phrase to go in, but I feel like eventually all of them were in there like having yeah. the best time. It was, it was really loud and it was really fun. It was just brilliant. Once that part of the party stopped, then we went over to get some food. But the thing was, it was like a summer's day. Yes. It was so warm. The sun had come out. The horses were out in the in the garden. It was literally like a It was November day. the 13th and you, you know, we were worried that it might be too cold or there might be rain. It was like mid-July. I actually had to put like, our sun, what are they, they called? Parasols, up to block the sun coming into the room. It was that warm. We were sweating. <laughs> so so then we all moved into the kitchen and we got all the babies into the high chairs. And I actually. And I, when my mum said, suggested we need 15 high chairs for every single baby, I was like, this is a, like, why would we be doing this? It's just strange. But then once all the babies are sat in all the high chairs, I was like, this is the most hilarious thing I've ever seen. They're all sat there like, Eating their little bits and <laughs> their pieces. Their little bits of their yogurt. It's just <laughs> hilarious. I, I think that was my favourite part. I mean, what would you do if you didn't have the high chairs? You'd just be like... Well, we just would have just been a relaxed But it's party. so nice. I think what your mum was right. It was so nice to have a moment of everyone sat around together and like yeah. eating and... Yeah, so we did that and then we did the cake. Rio just loves the streamer. He was just like... He was blown away. Happy birthday, dear Rio. He loved it. And it was just such a nice moment to see all the babies there from NCT, our best friends brought yeah. their babies as well. We're, we're, we're such, we're so fortunate to have Rio have like 15 one-year-olds. I think in the lockdown period, like my sister's baby didn't have any friends. Yeah, and no. I feel like we're so lucky that we, he was born just at the end of that where he's been able to mingle and meet people, which is fantastic. So we also forgot to say, Rio had actually was started teething two days before and it was really touch and go whether he would actually, and we talked a bit about it in our last vlog, will he be well enough for the event? And my mum actually said, if he is ill, would you count this party? And was like, of course he will, but I'd be so sad to yeah, have I was. I mean, the amount of work and But time. he was under the weather, like he, yeah. he just was in pain. Like, yeah. and there's nothing you can do when it's teething, it's hard. So like, you, you can see like from the videos, he's a little bit subdued, yeah, but he does he like, is. he is like trying to get involved with the entertainment. Yeah, he does love it. He did really love it. But it just, it, you know when you, you know your own baby, it just wasn't his, high energy No, cell, he's so, such a high energy baby. It's he's like, amazing. We were starting to go a bit downhill halfway through the party. And I gave him baby Nurofen, his first ever time game, ibuprofen. And within 20 he minutes- was buzzing. Buzzing. Have you ever given your child? <laughs> because it's not a bad thing. You I felt like, when I, when I saw him, how excited he was, I was like, oh, I want some. I know. <laughs> <laughs> he literally is like there in his little giraffe outfit, wiggling his bum, like in the ball pit with all the kids, clapping away. Everyone was like, it was like a second wind rave going on in the, in the That's office. one thing we haven't spoken about is our outfits. Can we just oh, talk yes, about that really quickly? So we wanted to make sure that we went with a, obviously, jungle theme. So Francis actually got an, a, his outfit all from ASOS. Yeah. It was his beautiful dungarees. Yeah. 
leopard print dungarees, yeah. super extra, black top, and you just looked divine. Oh, thank you. And then I wore, which I think is my new favorite outfit of all time, this fleecy, um, jumper slash t-shirt with these shorts and I thought to myself I'm gonna be wearing really shorts cold. in November you're gonna really be cold. cold it was the perfect, perfect outfit <laughs> you're literally best dress I think and then Rio if you are looking for a one-year-old birthday outfit go onto Amazon they've got so many amazing selections for one-year-old birthday parties mm -hmm. I bought his from Amazon um, which was a little because I actually bought him two one for the photo shoot and then one for his actual birthday I had a little number one on it and it was a little giraffe with giraffe print with a little tail on the end on his, on his bum. The hilarious thing is when Francis put it on, standard Francis, Francis put it on back to front. When you first lifted it up, I was like, oh, Francis, the tail goes on the back of the seat. <laughs> But yeah, it was just amazing. And then kind of as the sun was going down, everyone started to kind of leave and just giving them these gifts, everyone getting those bags. And it was like they had ended up leaving with more gifts than they gave us. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's like, no, it's like they were, it's like it was like their own birthday, basically. Everyone left gifts with their own birthday. Rio had so many gifts. He had beautiful gifts. We didn't even open them that day because it was just well, it wasn't his actual birthday, but it was just too much. We were just dead. It was the most epic day. I'm so glad we did it because I think sometimes people say, oh, they're not gonna remember it, but it also was a celebration of what we have done this mm -hmm. year and those endless nights, the long hours, the, you know, all those massive changes into our life and then learning to look after him. So the biggest lesson that we learned from 2019 was when my dad sadly passed away at the end of 2019, we only celebrated his birthday on that year, knowing it's probably gonna be his last birthday. And then we thought to ourselves, why don't we do that every year? Why don't we throw a massive party every year? Because you just never know what life's gonna throw at you. And I wanna create all these amazing memories for us and for him, uh, for Rio. And so that's why we do these yeah. elaborate fun parties that seem possibly over the top because we were just thinking to ourselves, you just never know. And as a child, though, obviously Stuart knows this, like a birthday was really important. Like I, I always wanted my mum to decorate. And as, as my brothers got older, they didn't really care as much. So she assumed that I wouldn't care as much. So she didn't make as big an effort. And I got really upset when I was 17. When he was 17. I threw the biggest tantrum. I'm like, where, the, where are the flags? Where's the bunting? Where's the, like, because I, and I just want to make sure that every single one of our birthdays, whatever age, the bunting is out. The bunting is up. I call them flags because she's Dutch, that's what she calls them. I just, it, it's important to me because it's like, that is your day where it's about you. And I just think, yeah, it should never ever be like, oh, just, just go to cinema or something. That's boring. For me, the most beautiful part of the day was the fact that we had Sam and her family there, Rio Soriga. It was so nice to see them reunited. Like, Rio spent nine months of his li early life with that family and they will always be part of our oh, bigger family. family and I just it actually was so nice we hadn't seen them since probably since July just they spent the night and just yeah just catching up and just reminiscing on such an incredible journey and how quickly this year has gone like it seems like it was like ages ago but at the same time it seems like it was just yesterday it's such a yeah. strange I yeah. cannot believe a whole year has passed no. that's just crazy um, so it was so nice spending time with them. And then also our new surrogate, Carly, and her whole family came. And one of the, my favorite moments from the day, one of, was seeing Craig, who is Sam's husband, and Carly's husband talking. Yeah. I just thought to myself, it's just so nice to have this amazing extended family. I wouldn't want to do yeah have a baby any other way really. No, I know. I'm quite it's, glad we're gay, we have to have a surrogate. I know, <laughs> it's so nice to have these two families as part of one, as part of our It was, family. for me, that was the, my best moment of the party, seeing those two together, because I, obviously, having Carly there, I, I messaged her today, just like, just so much gratitude for what she's about to do for us. Um, but just seeing two men, because traditionally men can be more close-minded, I would say, in my experience growing up, what I was, thinking about men is that they, you know they don't like gay people and just seeing these two you know men with two families just being so welcoming of us and, and we process. love Carly's husband Phil as well oh, he's, he's so, so funny nice. he made us these t-shirts that I said know. I'm the daddy I'm the daddy and, and I'm then, the husband of the world and so. I'm the husband of the surrogate or something <laughs>
don't remember. He's so random. <laughs> so <laughs> random. But we loved it. It was just, yeah, that was just having those two families together and getting for them to meet properly for the first time. And I just sometimes feel like, I feel like our life is a bit like a Disney movie. It's like, especially that day, to have, to be in a position where two friends have offered to be our surrogate. They both have these beautiful families. They both came to this party. The sun was out. The horses just popped their heads over in the garden. Like, I was like, we might as well just break out into song. This is just, yeah. it's just so beautiful. Oh. <laughs> I watched Enchanted this morning. So Disenchanted. Can, Disenchanted, so you can tell that I'm in that kind of... Uh, How do we know? If baby number two happens first time and all, you know, fingers crossed, then we will have a very busy September to December. Basically. Even July. So we will start July, August off. <laughs> it could be born in August. So it could be July, August, September off. October, November. October's Halloween. November's Rio's birthday. December, Christmas. Ah. What a busy end of the year! Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you've enjoyed having a look into this party that we put on. We, we just loved it so much and we can't wait for the years to come with all these new adventures and parties and fun and just living life to the absolute full. There's one thing we, you take away from us is that we just want to live the life. best life and have the most, you know, we've come from nothing. We just have this vision that we want to just have so much fun and that's what yeah. we always aim to do even when France is a little bit tired. <laughs> even when Stuart's a bit tired. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so tired, I just want some time out, honey. It's busy, it's going to get busier. <laughs> so coming up, what's coming up? We have some exciting things coming up, Stuart. We fly to San Diego next month to do the first embryo transfer, which is very exciting. So we will see how that goes. And the, the, the thing I learned from last time is having no expectations yeah. and just visualizing the end result, result. but with no expectation yeah. of the moment. Yeah, that is the challenge because you, you get caught up in the like, what ifs and actually it's about visualize it and then let go. It's a constant daily. We really need to come up with a name for a... Yeah baby. We yeah. want it to be a unisex name anyway, so whether it's a boy or a girl, yeah. that's what we're going to do with Rio, really. If it was a, if he was a boy or a girl, it was yeah. going to be called Rio, because we love that name so much. We need a unisex name that's right for a boy, right for a girl, that is short. Yeah. And just that we're like, yes, this is it. Because yeah. I want to really start like visualizing, visualizing this child in our life. Rio and... <laughs> and of course, Another exciting thing is we are going to be vlogging every single day in December for Vlogmas, Christmas, and we've just filmed an epic opening for our for our series on YouTube. I'm so excited. It's going to be full on, but we've got to start planning the things, the, the Christmas markets, the... And it's going to, obviously, it's going to include a trip to America too, like... Ah, and Christmas, <laughs> and our family over. I know, we're having all of France's family. Hopefully mine and too. And yours too. I hope so. We'll see. They like to go to the caravan every year. <laughs> That's us signing out from this video. Thank you so much for watching to the end. If you haven't subscribed yet, Stuart, what do you want to say to them? Please do it. Please do it. <laughs> we love it. We just honestly are loving this process. We're loving creating and we just would love to share that love with you all. Yeah. So please like and subscribe. We'll see you next week. We love you. Bye.